Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Father Abbott and the community of Dowie Abbey, it is my privilege as the prior to welcome you today. It is our honour to greet the Deputy Lord Lieutenant for the Royal County of Berkshire, Mr. Willie Hartley Russell, representing Her Majesty the Queen, and among other civic authorities, the Mayor of Newbury. Alongside the Bishop of Portsmouth, we are glad to welcome Archbishops and Bishops of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, and abbots, religious, and many clergy from the United Kingdom and from overseas. They are joined by our ecumenical guests, among whom is the Anglican Bishop of Reading. We extend a warm welcome to many friends of the community who are with us today. The William Allen Association, the Dowie Society, Oblates, the Dowie Abbey Choir, and many faithful from parishes incorporated into and associated with Dowie. Uh, in particular, it is a joy to welcome the twin sister of Father Abbott, Mrs. Amanda Butler, and her husband, Stephen, and Father Abbott's nephews and nieces, and the personal friends of Father Abbott, who have come today from near and far. May I just ask your attention now for a few administrative points. At communion, please could you use the central aisle Communion will be distributed two points here by Abbot Paul and uh, Bishop Philip. The stewards will direct. And if you could return by the side aisles, again, directed by the stewards. Gluten-free hosts will be distributed at the entrance to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel over here. We invite you for refreshments after Mass. Please would those on this side of the church leave via the glass cloister over there, following again the steward's directions. On this side of the church, if I could ask you please to wait until directed by stewards to follow the same route. We're thinking we're probably going to have inclement weather and we don't want some people going outside. So we're going to have to go that way and we want to avoid a crush. Lastly, we have a professional photographer today whose photographs we plan to make available. But we would politely request that no other photographs are taken during or after the mass so as to maintain a prayerful and dignified atmosphere. Thank you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Let's begin this solemn offering of the sacrifice of the Mass, in which Tom Paul Gunter will be consecrated as the 11th Abbot of Dowie by invoking the powerful help of she who is the best loved member of the church on this, the festival of her nativity. And in a moment's silence, let's also turn to the Lord and ask him to make us worthy to participate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. In excelsis is the
Let us pray. Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace, that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those for whom the birth of her Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asa, and Asa the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers, and the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abiud, and Abiud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Achim, and Achim the father of Eliud, and Eliud the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Matan, and Matan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Most Reverend Father, in the name of our community, I present to you the Abbot-elect of our Monastery of St. Edmund, King and Martyr, of the Order of St. Benedict, in the Diocese of Portsmouth, we ask you to bless him as Abbot of our Monastery. Has he been duly elected? We know and testify that he has. Thanks be to God. It's a very great privilege for me to have been asked by Don Paul to give the homily at his abbatial blessing. I've known Don Paul for nigh on 40 years. And um, I asked him when he rang me and asked me to preach, well, why is he asking me of all these people, these learned abbots and people here? And um, he was as erudite as ever in coming to the point and saying, well, I know you'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> well, indeed, the, the rubrics in the pontifical state that for this right, for the blessing of an abbot, and of course, Don Paul will know those rubrics like the back of his hand, it says a brief homily is to be given. So I will endeavor to comply. However, one of the purposes of the homily is to bring the attention of our minds and hearts in prayerful contemplation of the mysteries that we celebrate. So it's important that we bring our attention to some of the symbols that will be present in this rite. For all the elements which we celebrate today in this sacred rite, articulate the principles of monastic leadership for the one who has been elected by their brothers to exercise it. And through the prayers which we offer in the symbols of the rule and insignia which will be presented to Paul and by the physical gestures performed each liturgical action conveys and impresses upon us the role of an abbot in his monastic community. In his rule, and I have to say, it's the first time I'd sat down and read it in its entirety, having been asked to, to preach. In his rule, I discovered that St. Benedict has much to teach regarding the virtues and qualities needed in the life of an abbot. And this is because Benedict understood the tremendous responsibility of the abbot's role in a monastic community. Nothing less than the spiritual health of the entire community is at stake. And this significance is the impetus for the rite of blessing which we are about to celebrate and is the reason for that we are gathered around you in prayer today as you take up your new office. I know you will have a profound awareness of what you consider to be your own unworthiness in assuming the role of abbot. I know it's certainly not something which you sought. Most of us who are called to positions of leadership in the church doubt our worthiness for the task we have been called to undertake. If 
we didn't would be unfit for office. I urge you, though, to place all your trust in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who knows us better than we know ourselves. If in humility you heed his word and seek to do his will, he will grant you the graces you need. For without doubt, Paul, it is not so much your considerable talents, skills, and intellect, all of which the Lord has been pleased to give you in abundance, as many of us who know you realize. It's not these things which you will need to exercise good judgment in your ministry as an abbot, but rather the gift of wisdom. It's not therefore the strength of your own efforts which will make you worthy of the task of governing this monastery, but only your loving and faithful adherence to divine wisdom, Jesus Christ, our dearest Lord and our closest friend. It is he alone who is able to sustain you in your new commission. In the second chapter of his rule, St. Benedict speaks of the virtues which an abbot must possess and the qualities of leadership he must be capable of exercising. The abbot, he says, holds I quote, the place of Christ in the monastery, since he is addressed by a title of Christ, as the apostle indicates, you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, by which we exclaim, Abba, Father. This is why the prayer of blessing that Bishop Philip will use speaks of the abbot as being a father to the monks. It says, may his manner of life show clearly that he is what he is called, a father. As we know, the title of abbot comes to us from the Aramaic word Abba, meaning father. And it is as a father that you, Paul, are now called to lead the monks of this monastery. That is the unique relationship which is entrusted to you. Paul, you will know and appreciate far better than I, but this is why in St. Benedict's teaching, there is a repeated emphasis on the ability of the father of the community, the abbot, to listen. Most of us will be familiar enough with the opening words of the prologue of his rule. Listen, listen carefully, my son, my child. We should remember, though, that this is an allusion to the same words, similar words, phrased only very slightly differently in the Old Testament book of Proverbs several times and the exhortation to embrace wisdom. This appeal requires that we listen attentively not only to the voice of God our Father and our spiritual fathers, but also to those who are placed in our care, whether they be young or old in years. And indeed, St. Benedict said that sometimes the Lord speak to us through the youngest. It's a form of listening exercise not so much with a view to achieving a consensus, which is what we all tend to do, but is the prerequisite for a common search in humility and truth for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the gift of wisdom.
The abbot must, of course, be one who leads and teaches. However, the real effectiveness of his leadership and teaching will be measured foremost through the witness given by his own life of faith. St. Benedict describes this in his rule as follows. Anyone who receives the name of abbot is to lead his disciples by a twofold teaching. He must point out to him all that is good and holy, more by example than by words. I think someone must be timing my homily. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly there. The principal pastoral tools which you will use in the exercise of your abbatial office are symbolized by the presentations which are soon going to be made to you in this rite of blessing. The first is the rule of your Holy Father, St. Benedict. This must be the spiritual foundation which you use to guide and sustain the brothers whom God has placed in your care. The second, symbolized by the ring you will wear, is constancy in charity, in loving kindness. It is by this that you, that loving kindness, that you will maintain this monastic community in the body of brotherly love. And the third, symbolized by your crozier or pastoral staff, is the sacrificial love and tender care which you must exercise faithfully to lead and help your monastic brothers and this community. Paul, on this feast of the birthday of the Blessed Virgin, the seat of holy wisdom, I pray with all my heart that through her intercession and with her unfailing help, you will be always a wise father, a loving brother, and a tender friend to all the members of this monastic community whom you have been called to lead and serve. May the Lord bless you in his service. Amen. My dear brother, when a man is chosen to stand in the place of Christ and to guide others in the way of the Spirit, it is right that he should be questioned on matters concerning his office and on the qualities he brings to it. This is the age-old teaching and requirement of our fathers in the spiritual life. Following their wise guidance, I now ask, will you persevere in your determination to observe the rule of St. Benedict and will you be diligent in teaching your brothers to do the same and so encourage them in the love of God, in the life of the gospel and in fraternal charity? I will. Will you teach your brothers by your constant dedication to the monastic life, by sound doctrine, and by the good example of your own deeds, rather than by mere words. I will. 
will you always be concerned for the spiritual good of those entrusted to your care and seek to lead your brothers to God? I will. Will you be faithful in watching over the goods of your monastery and prudent in using them for the benefit of your brothers, of the poor and of the strangers at your gate? I will. Will you always and in all matters be loyal, obedient and reverent to Holy Church and to our Holy Father, the Pope and his successors? I will. May the Lord strengthen your resolve, give you every grace and keep you always and everywhere in his protection. Amen. Amen. Our dearly beloved, God has chosen his servant here, Don Paul, to be the leader of his brothers. Let us pray that the Lord will sustain him with his grace. Let us kneel. Stefane, 
Cipriane, 
Let us stand. Almighty God and Father, you sent your only Son into the world to be the servant of all, the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Listen to our prayer. Bless and strengthen Paul, your servant, chosen to be abbot of this monastery. May his manner of life show clearly that he is what he is called, a father, so that his teaching will, as a leaven of goodness, grow in the hearts of his spiritual family. Let him realise, Lord, how demanding is the task to which he now sets his hand, how heavy the responsibility of guiding the souls of others and of ministering to the many and various needs of a community. Let him seek to help his brothers rather than to preside over them. Give him a heart full of compassion, wisdom and zeal so that he may not lose even one of the flock entrusted to his charge. May he dispose all things with understanding, so that the members of the monastic family will steadily make progress in the love of Christ and of each other, and run with eager hearts in the way of your commandments. Give him the gifts of your spirit. Set him on fire with love for your glory and for the service of your church. And may he in turn inflame with zeal the hearts of his brothers. In his life and in his teaching, may he set Christ above all things. And when the day of judgment dawns, receive him in the company of his brothers into your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Take this rule, which contains the tradition of holiness received from our spiritual fathers. As God gives you strength and human frailty allows, use it to guide and sustain your brothers whom God has placed in your care. Take this ring, the seal of fidelity, wear it as a symbol of constancy and maintain this community in the bond of brotherly love. Take this shepherd's staff and show loving care for the brothers whom the Lord has entrusted to you, for he will demand an account of your stewardship.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid, and may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless and glorify your name on the nativity of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with their exaltation. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The history of faith. We Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Benedict, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philip, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, this your servant Paul, who today has been blessed as abbot of this community, 
all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul.
us pray. May your church exult, O Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries as she rejoices in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whatever about the new Prime Minister dodging heavy rain to make her first speech, only a brief few hours ago, I was prepared for thunderstorms. But I should have known God would look after things. And immediately my mind turned to that wonderful psalm, number 29, which reminds us of the blessing and purpose of occasional bad weather, since nothing grows in arid spaces. The God of glory thunders. In his temple, they all cry glory. And that word glory describes perfectly what we have been about this morning. Not to us, but to God be the glory. And it's no small thing that you have all gathered in God's house to pray for the community of St. Edmund and to pray with the community of St. Edmund in our communal and shared witness to faith. Many have worked so hard in different ways to make today what it is. And so much of that work, which is the work of God, has happened behind the scenes, as well as the beautiful music that has reminded us of the irreplaceable place of beauty in the role of salvation alongside ceremonies that have helped us to pray and words gestures, texts, and if I may also add, the wonderfully insightful homily that reminded us that God comes first and that we honor Almighty God in how we treat one another. And so all of these symbols have characterized this holy mass. That all things could be renewed in Christ, I would like, of course, to thank the Bishop of Portsmouth for his kindness to us and for presiding so beautifully over this celebration. But my heart, no less, and abundantly, is extended to Abbot Geoffrey, who over so many years, consistent with his motto, Multorum Serviri Moribus, from the rule of St. Benedict, served the variety of temperaments, 
with unique patience, steadfastness, and personal sacrifice. We owe him a deep gratitude, and I wish him every peace and tranquility in everything, and what's more, nestled between the Elysian hills of Ulster. It goes without saying, I speak in biased favour of that place. In the first few days after his election, months before its more stylized inclusion within his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, Pope Francis said something that struck me forcibly. A self-referential church is a sick church. The Litany of Saints contained some remarkable and outward-facing ministers of the gospel, and of every time, and of every state of life, whether married, single, religious, monastic, priest, bishop, and of course, for the heritage we have received in the faith in our own land, many martyr saints. I would just like to draw your attention to a selective few mindful as we are, that the world cries out for a peace the world cannot give. At a time when persecution of faith, financial crisis, and increasing material hardship are self-evident, that these saints and blesseds should give us courage to be missionary, that is, to become effective witnesses in our time to the person and saving work of Jesus Christ by communicating to others in what we say and do the love that has no limits. The patriarchs and prophets bring the struggles of the Holy Land and the faith of the Middle East into sharp relief. St. Edward the Confessor is the model of governance because its zenith was service and charity. The 19th century Saint Augustine Zhao Rong and all martyrs of China remind us of how much the church is suffering in that part of the world. Also in the 19th century, Blessed Volodymyr singled out among all the martyrs of Ukraine, a reality currently contextualized by war in Europe for the first time in decades. He was a member of the lay faithful. He was a cantor, in fact, animating participation in the liturgy consistent with the witnessing to the gospel by the shedding of his blood. The 20th century Blessed Cyprian Tanzi was a Nigerian pastoral priest who brought his zeal for souls to the service of his brethren in the monastery he later joined, so that his energetic apostolic zeal emanated as rays of light from within the community and looking outwards. 
It is a particular privilege and joy to receive the abbatial blessing on the feast of the Nativity of our Blessed Lady. There could be no more powerful a patronage, and I entrust the community and all we can give to the Church in the world of our time to her maternal care and seat of wisdom. If you look at the prayer card that accompanies the Mass booklet, itself a welcome souvenir for you all, you will see the arms of Our Lady sustaining the Christ child for the Paschal mystery and the work of salvation which will always have the eternal word over sin and even over death itself. Conscious that this day is not about me, despite appearances, but about the community of St Edmund and all whom we serve, I chose a text to steer my ministry going forward, which is to be found beneath the image, Convertat ut benignitas, which translates loosely as that by kindness he may convert. It comes from the hymn for lords sung in the Liturgy of the Hours during Lent, Jam Christi Sol Justitiae, Already, O Christ, the Son of Justice, probably composed around the 6th century, but about whose authorship we are not entirely sure. It is a reminder to us that no zeal for anything good will be effective unless we are kind. Kindness draws and is itself a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Saint Benedict wrote in his 49th chapter of the Rule that a monk's life should be a continuous Lent, that he should look forward to Easter in this world and in the next with joy and eager longing. The sound effects are now perfectly on cue. Any moment, thunder and lightning, very, very frightening. May this day bring joy to all of us as we conclude this celebration with the solemn singing of the Te Deum and afterwards as we gather to share in the reception that follows. Please pray for me and for all the community. May God bless and reward you all. Thank you. Dominus Fopisco, Sit Nomen Domini Benedictum, Adjutorium Nostrum in Nomine Domini, Benedicat Vos Omnipotens Deus Pater, et filius, 
et spiritus sanctus.
seculi. Tenia retame, tenia retame. 